Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, the big, the bad, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. It is now 1942. Can you feel the difference? I, I can feel it. It feels like 1942 to me. Uh, as we hover over Pearl Harbor, the Allies' main base in the Pacific. Um, now, I'm going to, as we enter 1942, I'm not going to change a whole lot. Hell, I'm enjoying playing the game, and, and hopefully you're enjoying this. It's far and away the most popular series we've had on the channel overall. Um, but what I'm going to do is, instead of sitting there and showing you how to make each task force, I think we're way beyond that point. What I'm going to do is just go to certain locations, and uh, if I'm setting up things or whatnot, I think I'll pause the recording. And then restart it, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Also make the episodes a little shorter that way. And so we'll cover the same kind of stuff. And you can say, oh, well, you didn't move this transport here. You're not doing that. Because I will show all of that stuff. But as far as going in and showing you every tanker that we put together, uh, I just think, you know, we're beyond that. We're beyond that. So, um you know, there may be a pause. You may see the, the map jump around at, let's say, the 12-minute mark, and that's just because I will have paused the recording, done some things offline, and uh, then continued on. All right, so let's get after it. It's uh, January 1st, as I said. Let's go up and look at our intelligence report and just see what happened this last turn or on New Year's Eve of 1941. Man, I'm glad to have 1941 behind us. Uh, just... Terrible what happened at Pearl Harbor. Let's look to a new future. Um, today at Sortie Land, uh, you know, 2,800 to 2,100. Okay. Uh, they took four air to air. They took one by flak, one operational. We actually took three operational. Our score is climbing. We had already kind of looked at this, but I just wanted to recap it. Um, last turn, what got lost? Well, we lost four ships, but none of them were really very valuable. Every ship is valuable, just like every person. But, uh, in this case, you know, we lost, what, seven points. Uh, we sunk one Japanese ship. Uh, this was a cargo ship. That was worth ten points. So we actually, uh, did a little more damage, uh, than the Japanese did. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just get... Well, I do want to look at top pilots. Let's look at top pilots. Uh, we now have Burgard. He's the guy, man. This guy has been doing it from the start. He was the first guy to make it to ace status, I believe. But now he's up to eight kills. He's going to be a double ace soon. Uh, going to be flying the two spades on there. Um, okay, we've got a six. Uh, these are mainly army. Uh, we didn't quite get our Brit there. Uh, Fiskin, we need him. He's got four. He's sitting on four. Been sitting on four for a couple of turns. I want old Fiskin to be, be that first British ace. He's flying Buffalo Ones. He's a little disadvantaged. Uh, it's the Flying Tigers that are making up most of this, this list. If you're on here with a Buffalo or a Warhawk, you're some kind of pilot, my friend. Um... Okay, let's get out of here, and I'm going to run up, as I like to do, and start in Abaddon. And this is the part of the program where I say, you know, if I get around to where I'm just building certain cargo task forces, I'm not going to show all of that anymore. Uh, and we're going to try to keep these episodes down to about 30 or 40 minutes. I just think it's more palatable uh, for people to watch 30 or 40 uh, of a dense, dense game like this. Okay, we got no ships in port. Uh, let's see what our tankers are doing here. Okay, they're filling up at CS Karachi with no refuel. Uh, do not refuel. Same idea. These are all of the ones that we were filling up last time. We got nothing new in, so we're all good over there. Now, it looks like Aiden did potentially get something in. I don't know. We've got these APs in here. Hey, the SS Trusty's here. Let's check out the Trusty. Uh, okay, the SS Trusty is a T-War emergency class. Uh, this is the, I'm 99.9% certain this is the first British sub we've seen. Um, he's got these Mark 8 torpedoes, which are much better than the Mark 14s, by the way. Uh, he could also load mines if we wanted him to, uh, but I don't think so. And I think what we'll probably do then is go ahead and form him up into sub patrol. All right, done. 
Uh, and we'll get the trusty in there. And we're going to send him then on down to Colombo, where we... Uh, this is essentially our main British base, right? I mean, this is where we're doing everything with the British Navy, uh, from a warship perspective, anyway. Um, all right, so his home port will be in Colombo, and I guess that all looks fine. I mean, I don't, what else are we going to do? The trusty is here. The trusty's ready to go. Now, I don't know how the British, I guess I should probably read up on this, how exactly the British use their subs in comparison to how, let's say, the Americans um, use theirs or the Germans use theirs. I, I just don't know what British sub doctrine was at this time. Uh, we're going to have to make up our own, I guess, uh, but he's off to Colombo, so that's fun, British sub. Uh, we still have the same st stuff here. We're kind of keeping a few AKs around in case they need to take cargo. Uh, we got the APs for transport. While we're here, let's just look at Karachi very quickly. Uh, in Karachi, we have three ships in port. Uh, two motor launches and we have an AP here just in case we need to take something here or there or otherwise. Oh, you know one thing I want to go back actually. Let me go back to Aiden very quickly. Just wanted to see. Yeah, that's what I thought. We got this uh, we've got this Hussars regiment in here. His total load cost is 4219. The vast majority of that is cargo. So let's look at our ships in port. Um... Boy, I don't know if we can get there. I mean, he's 2,900. This Hussars to load his cargo is 3,800. I mean, we could use both cargo ships, I guess. Um, this goes to Burma Command. E okay, I'm going to do this offline. I'm going to get him loaded up, and I think I will take him down to Colombo for now. All right, right back with you. So what did I do? I, if we go look at this transport, I put the Moreton Bay. Now the Moreton Bay, this AP actually has a lot of cargo capacity. Uh, so he had plenty uh, with the Admiral Chase. So the Admiral Chase has 2,900 for the cargo. The Moreton Bay had 2,000 for cargo capacity and then had the troop capacity as well. So those two together easily take that on. And so we're just gonna name that transport. And we're going to Calcutta. Now we'll eventually uh, have him return to Colombo as his home port. So Calcutta is where he's going to go. If you want to look at how, how he's going to go, there he goes right around into Calcutta. I think we're far enough away there from any Japanese bombing activity. That should not be a problem. Uh, so off he goes. Okay, and that's how I'm going to do it from now on. I'll just go set those things off up offline and then we can talk about them later so we still got some ships in port uh, we also have level bombers up here um, now this is kind of interesting there's 16 level bombers they're the blenums uh, I would like these in at Colombo what's our how hard is it gonna be to load these up uh, great question he asks um, okay, I'm going to go figure this out. I'll be right back. All right, so yeah, I went ahead and got those Blenheims loaded up here on the Esperance Bay. So we had that. That's why we got these transports up here. Things appear in Aden uh, quite often for the Brits, as they do in Cape Town. And so, you know, when you get them, you want to get them out there and get them uh, useful. So what do we do? We loaded them up on the Esperance Bay. We're going to take them out and around Colombo, and we're going to bring them right into Calcutta. Uh, do some bombers there. Now that uh, group already has an experience level of 59. So we do have them on training, uh, but eventually we're, we're uh, training them for ground attack. They're medium level bombers. Blenheims aren't great in that role, but we may need that eventually as the Japanese start to roll or try to roll up here into India. It'd be nice to have some ground attack bombers. They're not really tactical bombers. So, you know, you might be better off doing airfield, something like that. But I, I'm, I'm kind of worried we don't have enough ground bombers. So I'm just going to go ahead and train those 16 for that. Okay, uh, so that is through Aiden. Uh, nothing else to do there. Uh, I checked. I checked. Uh, Mombasa. They've just got the coastal. Nothing else going on there. What's happening in Cape Town? 
Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we've got more stuff that showed up here. As always, 77,000 supply, 138,000 fuel. We've already got a tanker, the Athel Duke, that's set to go to Perth. Now, as you can see, it's going to have to do a little bit of a minimum refuel because it doesn't quite make it there and back. Then uh, we've got the AKs here. Ah, they just got here, right? Yeah, it looks like they did. Okay, I'm going to go set these up, and when I come back here in a second, uh, we'll talk about everything we set up here at Cape Town. All right, we've gotten a lot... Whoops. Hey, get back down there. We've gotten a lot of ships in at Cape Town. Uh, these are <coughs> all things that are coming over from Australia, down from India, uh, they're all congregating here, and I'm having them disband when they get here so we can put them back into more logical task forces. So let's look at this. Uh, I put together all of these. They've got a great endurance, 17,900. Now, those could go to the U.S. East Coast, potentially, uh, and pick up stuff there. We could do something like that. We're eventually going to have to go pick up more stuff. As you can see, I mean, 77,000 supply sounds like a lot, uh, but this very quickly eats into it. I mean, that's 30 almost 30,000 all on its own. Um, we've got this going CS to Perth, okay? Then we've got the Athel Duke here that's picking up uh, as much fuel as it can going to Perth, and we've got that on a CS as well. Uh, we I put these AKs together, the Trieste, uh, the Steel Inventor, whatnot. I'm having them go to Colombo. They're doing a CS supply out to Colombo just because Colombo's got like 27,000. I want to make sure Colombo's got plenty. This is going to Perth with a CS. Uh, you can see a lot of it's already loaded. Then I put these other two ships in there. They were like similar ships. And then we've got this group that's also going to Perth. Uh, it's a little mismatched, but that's okay. The Nova Scotia will just have to slow down slightly uh, to let these other two go. I wanted to break that up from the other one so we don't make our task forces a little too big. We'll separate them a little bit. And that's Cape Town. Um, Speaking of Colombo, let's go look at Colombo. Let's see what's going on there. We, we've got all of our British, uh, you know, attack vessels, I guess, you know, surface vessels uh, that are actual warships. We've got them all together. We've got the Prince of Wales and the Repulse. Uh, we got those out, uh, luckily, of Singapore. Uh, we got the Hermes sitting here. Not a great ship, but uh, it's better than nothing. Uh, we've got quite a few light cruisers. Again, they just hide. Uh, that, or at least that's how I play it. Uh, what ships do we have in port? We have an AS here, and we've got two APs ready to carry anything we may, we may need carried. Speaking of which, let's go over here and look and just make sure everything we've got here is what we want. We've got an assault strength of 107 now. So I think this unit uh, that we brought over here this Ceylon detachment can now go to Kagala. Oh, we were, we're already doing that. Look at us. One step ahead, off he goes to Kagala. He's just going to go march back over here. I guess I could rail him, but does it really matter? Not, not really. Not really. Uh, so the ships in port are fine. We don't really have anything else to do. We don't have any aircraft here. Uh, I was tempted to take those Blenheims here just so we have some aircraft, but I do not like them to be uncovered with no fighters at all. Not that we have much at Calcutta, but that's the first place we would bring them back to. Um, the coast of India is something I look at like once every five turns or so just to make sure it's okay. I do like to look at Madras from time to time. Uh, you know, you just never know at Madras. You know, there's sometimes we take troops or we try to take troops troops over to Cal or Calcutta, potentially Rangoon if we can get in there, um, but nothing here. I mean, everything that's here is supposed to be here. We do have this AP group that could eventually go somewhere else. We just don't have, now they dropped off, you know, what they could at Calcutta. We just don't have a lot of British troops coming in yet. Uh, to be honest with you, this should probably head to Aden uh, I don't like, you know what, I'm going to take the Rajala out of there. Uh, yeah, Rajula, 
okay and done so that that's still here and then I'm gonna take this task force and I'm gonna send it up to Aiden I could also send it to Cape Town but we've got a lot of transports at Cape Town right now so let's send this up to Aiden um, just so it's prepared should something else come in now that we're using a few of the APs to come down here to Calcutta we'll just kind of switch places with them uh, he does not need to be on full speed uh, <laughs> we had him on that coming out of Rangoon he was coming out of Rangoon hot as hell uh, so we do <laughs> we had it on there let's go to Tricomaly. Uh we've got torpedo bombers out here looking around uh, let's see what kind of arc they're running yep just out here looking about uh, we got them on ASW right nope naval search naval search that makes sense with torpedo uh, we could do ASW uh, he says that and of course every time I say that then it ends up being what I I'm gonna do the reason I'm gonna do this and so I think we had this like approximately 60 to 120 something like that uh, the reason I'm gonna do that is I am not expecting any Japanese surface fleets over here anytime soon uh, so I would rather he just run anti-sub in case they get a little too close to Trincomalee here. Uh, let's just make sure that it's units. Yep, everything looks good there. We've looked at Madras. Let's go over to Calcutta. Uh, let's see what the heck is going on at Calcutta. Uh, I'm going to pause again here. I'll come back and we'll talk about it. All right, so I got these lined up at Calcutta how I want them. Uh, we've got a local mine sweep, of course. Uh, I put some of this together. These are all American ships, um, and they're going to actually go to Abaddon. I'm just going to send them up to Abaddon. They've got nothing on them right now. They came out of Rangoon. Uh, they're a little too valuable to send back in there, so we're going to take them out. Then you have this massive task force that went into Rangoon uh, at one time or another, came back out, uh, and it's sitting here. We've got it all loaded up with Indian uh, supply we're gonna take that down to Perth um, the Illinoisan it's a small enough it's a one or two point ship we're gonna send that into Rangoon at full speed <laughs> let's go boys all right uh, other than that I mean we've got you know a decent number of troops here 210 on the garrison you got to have 160 uh, we definitely want to have that in a place like Calcutta uh, we do have four fighters here and so they're running cap over the top uh, I made these Audaxes, uh, kind of straighten these out. We've got some Audaxes here. These are light level bombers. They're really not going to do much. Uh, we've got them running naval search here. Just, I don't know, hell in case. You never know. These guys are training. They're still on a 45. And that is Calcutta. As we go down the coast, now you may remember, um, we had some troops that we needed to get over here to Cox's Bazaar and down to Akiab. You can see they're marching here down the road, uh, and so they should be at their destination soon enough. Uh, we've got some things that we took out of various places here. Uh, we've got the Walrus Tube float planes. They're in training. They're at a 49 now. Um, Unfortunately, their extended range is only a five. I'm going to keep them training because they really don't do a hell of a lot of good with ASW. Uh, that is not the case with the Blenheims, who we'll have running out here. And then finally, we've got the Vildebeest. They're also in training. They're now at a 50. I think we'll just have them do a general naval search out here. Um, two, uh, let's do, whoops, let's do to a 50 level uh, they can just do a general naval search out in this area. Okay, um, so this is Chittagong, of course. I did that. Did I mention that? Uh, this unit's on the move to Akyab, so we've got a lot of things going into Akyab. We may want to think about putting more into uh, Chittagong itself. We've also got this HDML that's out here. He's running a little patrol zone. Uh, fine. Okay. All looks good. Uh, we've pretty much got this all lined up the way we wanted to. Uh, there's not a whole lot more to move. We can go look at Rangoon and we can go back and look at the Flying Tigers. Five ready, five damaged. Uh, we've got three ready, two in maintenance, five damage here. We're really running low on these guys now, unfortunately. Uh, four and four. So the Blenheims have six. They're running... Yeah. You know, they're the Blenheim IFs, so they're fighters. They're not very good fighters. They're like fighter bombers, right? Uh, serviceable, four, 
four that are damaged here for the Buffaloes. Got to keep running it over Rangoon, though. Uh, eventually, we want to get this other Flying Tigers group down here. Uh, let's see if we can get there. Let's see if we can get there. I hope we can. Uh, doesn't look like it. All right, let's go back. Let's look. 14 hexes is as far as he can go. So we're going to have to do that on the map. All right. And you can see here, I guess he can jump here. Can he get to Lashio? Yeah, it's a little too far. Well, it's saying restricted. Mm, I hope we can can transfer these out. I don't see what... Whoa, Jim, need a Christmas game. What just happened there? That just threw me all the way down. That's been happening a few times here and there. Uh, there's no air support here, but... Okay, we're just going to have to do it this way. We may eventually have to rail them. Uh, now he's here. I would imagine he can go to Lido, right? And then we can bring him down, or we could go... Try to get to Mandalay and bring them over. How many do we have here? 14. Yeah, that's going to be really, really helpful. I mean, we've got to get these guys over into Rangoon. Uh, I just think it's too important. How many did we leave behind? Uh, just one. So he'll be catching up hopefully soon enough. So we got them moving out. Uh, what air do we have here? Oh, we've got these British torpedo bombers. They've got a 12 uh, maximum. Uh, let's try to get them out here as far as we can. They can't quite get to Pashwan. Let's take them to Kunming. And we'll just keep skipping these British uh, torpedo bombers out of here. Well, I say bombers as if there's more than one. There's only one, but we're going to try to get him out of here. Uh, why not? Why not? Um, how many do you leave behind? Okay, so there is one in maintenance. Ah, there's two! So we've got two. All right. Uh, looking at Rangoon a little closer, just make sure that we've got everything set up here that we want. Let's look at our troops. They're all in combat defend. We've got 542 in combat value here. Okay. We've got this unloading, the Nord. Eh, you know, it's a little too good of a ship to have in here, I say. It's like a four or five point ship, but there's no reason to do that. These guys are going to need a little bit of a refuel. They're in here. They're getting ready to unload, coming in and out at full speed. Uh, as you can see, we're at 55,000 fuel, 71,000 supply. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Now, we're trying to get this guy out of here. The Japanese seem intent on coming back and around this way. Uh, okay. I mean, we've already taken one base from them. Uh, let's hope they continue that. Uh, we're really weak at Palombang. Uh, you know, I've tried not to play Fortress Palombang. That being said, we're a little too weak there. I mean, if we look at Palombang, I've got essentially one Dutch infantry unit here that's got anything going for it. Uh, the base force has a 12 assault value. The Sumatra garrison has a 29. Altogether, 41 is all we've got sitting here at Palembang. That's truly like anti-Fortress uh, Palembang. Uh, we do have this infantry over here that's got a 41. I do think I'm going to go ahead and send that over to Palembang. Because quite frankly, if you lose Palembang, it doesn't really matter if you have been Kalen. Um, you know, I guess the Japanese could come all the way around and land here. I find that unlikely um we could try can we do a strap move from here up the main road yeah that's okay can't do that can't do that all right let's go back here and we'll put this guy in palembang as well i, I just don't see the point in having having him and ben kalen if the japanese are already in palembang game over in sumatra so you know what's the point i do have this unit up in jambi uh, but it's only a six assault strength. I mean, it's just essentially a garrison, a little garrison that we have there. At Padang, we have this unit that's got a 34. Uh, you could make the same argument uh, for bringing this down the road as well. So I think I am going to go ahead and do that. Um, you know, I look, I'm not going to build this up to like a 500 or a 700 like some might in a human on human game. Um, but, you know, at this point, let's put him on move. Let's make sure I did that on this uh, guy at Ben Kalen, that he's on move still. 
All right, he is. Um, I'm not going to build this up to a five or seven hundred, but holding Padang does absolutely nothing for us if Palembang falls. Uh, so this is in some ways just kind of common sense. Uh, we got this guy coming to Palembang. He's at 31. By the time these guys get down here, it'll be about a 200. I think that's fair. Uh, you can tell me in the comments if you don't think that's fair. We'll go somewhere else. Now, this guy is going to replace down at Padang. Okay, or at least that's where he's heading initially. I'm fine with that. We've got a base force over here. These guys, I'm not going to really move very far. Uh, this guy, yeah, I've got him on combat. He's going to jump over here at some point. He's been bombing over here. Now, let's go look at what we have going on in Malaya. These units are getting in bad, bad shape. I mean, they're moving. They're trying. Uh, he's trying to get to Kuala Lumpur. He's only gone 32 of the 138 miles. I mean, technically, they're kind of cut off. They must be getting some supply up through here. But as you can see, the Japanese are now here. Uh, we've only got a base force left at Kwantan. Uh, these guys are desperately trying to get back here. But, of course, um, the rail is already cut. Uh, that, that ship has sailed. Uh, we're still sitting here at Temula uh, with a couple of decent forces. Uh, this one's a 106. This one, not so much. I mean, it's a 19. But the 106 is a decent one. Um, we've got another unit that's trying to get back here. That's just a base force. So we got a base force and infantry. We've got infantry and a garrison type unit here. At Kuala Lumpur, we're fighting it out with them a little bit. We're trying combat, defend at target. You know, we, we've got some prep there. We're at a 262. Now, eventually, hopefully, they just retreat back here as they retreat down Malaya. Not a whole lot to do. Uh, down in in this way. Uh, if we go up in China, uh, a lot of these forces are where we want them to be. You can see we're coming over here to Lu Chao. He seems to have a force finally coming out of uh, Canton. Uh, we do have, let's see what we've got here. All right, we've got, yeah, okay, 363 sitting here at Wu Chao. I like that. We've got things at Kukong. We've got all of these forces coming out. Now, he's been ostensibly cut off. Uh, he needs to get out of there and get down through here. I don't want him fighting. Um, he's in move mode. We better put him in combat mode. Uh, set all to this op mode. Let's put them in combat mode, just, just in case. They've gone 34 of the 184 miles they need to go, but we're trying to get all of these guys out of here, except at Wen Chao. I've, I've kind of just decided uh, this unit here at Wen Chao, the 25th Group Army, 100th uh, Chinese Corps, they're just going to try to fight it out. Now, it's not going to take long. You see these bright red units kind of starting to pop up all over the map. Uh, Changsha, we've got this unit or I say this unit, these units sitting out here in front of Changsha. Unfortunately, Changsha is sitting in front of the river, which always is not great. Now, we did take this base. How about that? Uh, we did take Xinyang, and we totally just, you know, bumped him out of there. Now, we're showing very low on supply. Hopefully, they can rush some supply in there. We've got these all at target now, and this unit... I think we want them going to Xinyang. Yep, we got them going to Xinyang. Let's make sure that's where they're marching to. Uh, Xinyang, yep, combat. Set all to this mop mo op mode. Set all to these combat orders. Set all to follow. Set all to march. Um, okay, so they're going to go into Xinyang as well. That gives us a really nice strong force. Now this force is scattering back to Ai Cheng. That was the force that kind of got routed out of there a little bit. We've got this unit coming up, this unit coming down. Um, well, no, this one's going to sit across the river. That's right. But here at Luoyang, and then you've got Cheng Chao, uh, obviously very, very important here. He's got bright red coming in here, but we've got a hell of a nice force here. Uh, let's see. Let's make every, make sure everybody's at their target and combat. 1627 uh, that we've got there, and then and they would have, probably have to, to attack across the river unless they come down this way. At Luoyang, we've got 1064. Okay, so uh, looking good, looking good there. We fought a little battle here. He's now taken uh, this. This is uh, Taiyun or. 
that's actually Taiwan, I guess is what you would say. Uh, we're also falling back to Pao Tao. I think all of this is fine. I don't think there's really anything we need to do there. Um, you know, look, the Philippines is basically gone. We could sit here and, and try to figure out, you know, how to set up the best defense. I've kind of already done that uh, in previous episodes. He's eventually going to take the Philippines. Just not a whole lot we can do about it. When we come back next time, we're going to look at Ustaven, Batavia, Surubaya, and look at where his main task force, which seems to have split up a little bit, where it's headed over here at Kendari, will also then resolve that turn uh in the next episode so thanks for joining me i'm going to make these a little shorter from now so i'm cranking out more uh we're going to try to resolve pretty much every damn episode uh but this one we got a little more to look at it's january 1st so we'll go through it um but again when we come back next time we'll just kind of look through java we'll resolve the turn and then we'll just get cranking on these uh and you know move into 1942 anyway thanks for joining me this has been strategy gaming dojo i'll talk to you soon have a good one